Hey guys, how you doing? So Dan from Trading with Dan here. So today we're going to talk about when a when an oil company is an oil company or when it becomes a hedge fund. So basically, what we've got going on in the market at the moment is a a rapidly um, reducing um, oil price, and that is causing all sorts of problems for various producers. Obviously, changing pie prices are something that market participants oil producers they, they know is they know happens they know prices do move so what they will do is they hedge their um basically the cost so they can fix in a, a set price they're going to get for their for their their oil um into the future um so that they know that they can carry on their operations if for example the oil comes down comes down this low so if you want to look at the um the example of um, of basically the Mexican um, net Mexican state oil producer um, Pmex. So what they did, they basically um, they basically bought bought puts at at fifty dollars at the fifty dollar level um, to hedge hedge what was going to be their production for that year. Um, and they actually do this every year in the market. They they buy they buy these puts. Um, so what they're actually doing, they're putting a floor in the price um, that they will be getting for their oil. So either um, they buy they buy fifty dollar puts. So either oil the oil price will be higher than that, in which case the protection that they bought, the premium they paid for those puts, will ex will basically they'll lose that, but they will gain a higher price um, for their actual oil um, if the oil price is higher than fifty dollars. But then if the price is lower than fifty dollars they will actually make money on those on those puts that they bought because they will become worth more and then that will offset the reduction in the 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 money that they're actually getting for the oil that they're then producing and selling so say then oil goes down to $30 a barrel they are still in effect when when you balance off off the profit and loss for the for the options and the oil they're actually going to still be getting basically $50 per barrel um yeah, obviously minus the premium that they pay, paid for those puts. And then another strategy that these guys will sometimes use is to offset the premium they have to pay to buy those puts. In the in 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 PMX example of the fifty dollar puts, they can sell calls. Um, so what selling a call is, they're then taking a risk. They'll sell a call at a higher price than what the oil is at the moment. So say oil at the time was sixty dollars a barrel. Um, they could sell calls at like say eighty dollars a barrel. So what they're actually doing is they're collecting a premium for selling that call that then will offset um, part of their cost of buying the put. So it reduces the cost of the insurance. But what they're actually sacrificing when they do that is any upside over the value of the call that they sold. So if oil then goes over eighty dollars, they will then have to pay. Um, they will then owe on owe on that contract on the options contract basically the 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 difference that the oil price has gone up so that will obviously be offset by the oil that they, they then they then produce and sell for that higher level so net net they basically capped off their value by selling those calls and this is a pretty common strategy um that oil companies use obviously pmx like we used an example um they do that with with the puts they buy the puts so so what what we want to talk about now that isn't that is not a um that is not an oil company becoming a hedge fund and speculating on the market that is just make, taking sensible precautions to basically um lock in roughly what the oil price is around that time with obviously leeway either way so if it goes lower lower they can they are covered and if it goes higher um well they 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 are, they will make more and more money up until the up until the level um that they sold the calls at if they do sell the calls some, some some companies don't even do that um but yeah so that's sort of like normal market procedure but so anyway so what we have what we have in a in a lot of these american companies because obviously americans they guys know best they're the speculators they're the capitalists they they know they know what they're doing don't they i mean they can just they can be an oil producer um an oil company 
and the market speculator at the same time. So what the what the what these really clever guys have done. Um, so I've got a couple of examples for you. These are actual real life examples, the situation that they're in now, and the reason why they're in trouble. So you get Occidental uh, Petroleum is is one of them. So what they did was they bought the puts at fifty five dollars, which is great. So that means that if oil goes under fifty five dollars, which it has done, obviously they're still going to get the fifty five dollars. Uh, minimum um, net net when obviously they cash in their options they did at, did also sell calls at $76 so they basically capped their upside at $76 um, and they collected a premium for that and obviously oil hasn't gone over 76 so that they get to keep that premium and that off offsets the costs that they paid for the the puts that they bought but then what they also did this is this the herein lies the error guys they sold puts at $45 so what they have done then they basically sold and got a premium thinking that they're, they're really smart that oil is not going to go under $45 you guys can see already where this is going thinking that they're really smart oil is not going to fall under $45 a barrel um, so we'll collect that premium that we get from selling those puts and and yeah then then they just carry on cracking on as normal thinking everything's great oil oils oils bouncing around the 50 to 60 up to 64 level and then obviously what happens to the market happens so <laughs> now they basically are fully exposed at a level way under way under 45 dollars um their hedge only protected them for a 10 dollar range between 55 and 45 so now they are basically in a mess so there's another American company, Marathon Oil, um, ticket MRO. They actually have a $47 floor. So they sold their puts at $47. Um, and obviously they bought their puts higher. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, you, see, you can see these guys are, these guys are in a lot of, tr a lot of trouble here. Um, yeah, so, so what, they're, what they are effectively doing, this is called a three-way collar. Um, so there are actually there are actually two types of three-way collars as well which which whilst whilst we're on the subject i will just explain this to you guys it may it may or may not be interesting to you but you get the conservative um conservative um three-way collars and the speculative three-way collars so the reason why one is speculative and one is conservative because what one does if we look at it here so these 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 are obviously the nat gas prices probably historic yeah 2013 nat gas prices so the the conservative way to do this um, well, we'll do the aggressive way because that's what we've just gone through with you guys. So the aggressive way would be to to basically buy the put. Um, this is obviously the price of that gas is higher than this at the moment. Let's say it's 440 at this point in time. So they bought the put at 430. So they're covered at 430. They sold the calls at 455, $4.55. So that means if the price goes over $4.55, they're not going to make any more money, but they're still going to get the $4.55. But they got the premium for that. They sold the premium that they covered, which then helped them pay for their put that they bought. And then, then they took the aggressive measure that we spoke about of putting the floor in for their hedge of $4.20 by selling that put. So that meant they were fully exposed to that downside if we did have a big drop in prices. And that's the aggressive three-way collar. So opposite to this, the conservative way, is they buy the put the same price so basically they protect the prices go lower they sell the call to get some premium so so they can basically collect some collect some premium to help pay for the the put that they they bought and um, so what that does is that basically means that they're capped at four dollars fifty five if the price um so basically the price goes over four dollars fifty five they're not going to make any more money but they're still going to get the four dollars fifty five but they did collect the premium for that. But what they then do, this is this is an out of the money call here. So four dollars ninety. So if the price goes up, they bought basically they bought um, bought some calls at four dollars ninety. Which this means if the price goes over four dollars ninety, they will then actually start to profit again and actually benefit from profit from from the the natural gas that they're then selling at a lot higher price. So this is obviously a lot higher than the price was currently trading. So because that's quite far out of the money, they would have been able to buy these for a for a low amount. Um, and then conversely they would have been able, they would have sold these for a low amount. So they basically what it is, they're risking a low amount of money to make a big amount potentially. And these guys were were getting a small amount of money to potentially risk a large amount of money. And this is what the what a lot of American oil producers have done. 
and this is this is why they're going to have some serious problems and then another thing another thing they have done they haven't actually hedged far enough into the future um so when these when the hedges that they do have the ones that have good hedges that like just appropriate hedges uh, hedges that you would if you were just an oil producer and not a market speculator um then then yeah so they are they are they are going to do okay but anyway so so this is similar to what happened um when you had the uranium um companies the uranium producers and then you had the um the 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 reactor the problem in um japan um fukushima i think it was that, that is what it was anyway i don't think it was but yeah so after that uranium prices collapsed so what you had was uranium producers that had contracts basically with um with with nuclear power stations to sell uranium to them and it became a lot more cost efficient for them not to actually bother mining and producing that uranium but to actually just go onto the open market buy it and then and then obviously make up the difference with the contracts that they had to sell obviously to sell at the higher prices um with 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 some uranium consumers so i mean yeah the U so some uranium companies actually basically just became a hedge fund because they were no longer producing uranium they were just basically buying spot uranium on the market and then taking delivery and then sending that over to to their suppliers so um yeah interesting it's interesting things options and how they work uh, and how you should use them um prudently for your business and how you well how you shouldn't use them if you are just running an oil business but if you want to speculate i mean that's fine we, we can all speculate if they want but um it, it probably was inappropriate for them to be doing that um for be doing for doing that when that wasn't really their area of expertise um, and obviously these things can happen and we know these things can happen like this drop in price and all because it has just happened so so there we go so this is not gonna um, be too beneficial for the um, a lot of American shell producers because because yeah just because they are fully exposed to these ridiculously low values so anyway i hope that guy was interesting for you guys um yeah um smash the likes if you thought that was useful um remember this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor and um, always do your own research and i'll speak to you guys soon